song comes from the Trinity Chapel of Salisbury Cathedral. The canticles are sung to Purcell in G minor, and the anthem, O Sing Unto the Lord, is also by Purcell.
first lesson is written in the book Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the sons of men to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's mind, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Also that it is God's gift to man that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has made it so in order that men should fear before him that which is already has been, that which is to be already has been, and God seeks what has been driven away. Here ends the first lesson.
the second lesson is written in the Acts of Apostles at the fourth chapter. And as the apostles were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the morrow, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the morrow, their rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a cripple, by what means this man has been healed? Be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, but which has become the head of the corner. And there is salvation in no, in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they wondered, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man that had been healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is manifest to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all men praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing was performed, was more than 40 years old. Here ends the second lesson.
us pray. in our time, O oh Lord. St. Edmund the King stood firm against the heathen, and at the cost of his own life was the saving of his people. Let him be our leader to encourage us to vanquish every assault of the enemy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works to proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. words of the anthem begin, O sing unto the Lord a new song, the music by Henry Purcell. Oh, Lord. 
Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our gracious Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth the Queen Mother, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. Endure them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O most holy Spirit of God, from whom alone floweth the fullness of wisdom and light, come in thine everlasting power and glory upon thy church and into the hearts of men to bring to the world a new birth of holiness, new understandings of truth, and new unity in love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with the Father and thee liveth and reigneth, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of thy name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord, bless us and keep us this night and forevermore. In the English hymnal, the first two verses of hymn number 297, The Spacious Firmament on High. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
This voluntary by John Blarrow was played on an 18th century Snetzler organ and it brings to a close today's choral evensong from the Trinity Chapel of Salisbury Cathedral. The organist and master of the choristers was Richard Seal and the assistant organist was Michael Smith. <laughs>